Sawmills, timber merchants. Where are you buying this timber, Tim? Where are you? Good morning, folks. We're on an adventure today because we're heading off to order the timber beams to the workshop and to pick up some cladding. So stick around and we'll see how we get on. Okay, we are now here and a little bit of a bit of background before we head in. So I'm in the process of ordering our beams and our timber for the workshop build. But in addition to that, this is the place where I picked up a piece of um, oak for a project last week. And as I put it on Facebook and Instagram, I was inundated with a couple of dozen emails and messages saying, where is this place? Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about sawmills later on in the video. Uh, different types of sawmills and, and how you can find a decent supply near you. It's great to be able to support local businesses, local sawmills and finding people who really know what they're doing and what they're talking about, unlike me. All right, let's go inside, order some timber and give you a little bit of a look around. So here we are then, it's kiddie in a sweet shop time. So this is Valley Sawmills, pretty local to us here, about 20 minutes away, and I've only recently found it. Now there's a few places like this around us, and I'm sure hundreds around the country, but I'm going to talk about that a bit later in the video. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a walk around here. Mark, the guy who is running the place, uh, said I was able to just have a, a wonder and share what their setup is, and also that we'll be doing a future video here on their sawmill. So the nice thing about this place is they really only deal with native timbers. They do have some imports, um, but majority of this is stuff that they've processed themselves, they've dried themselves, and they kind of know each bit of timber basically. So I bought some oak here last week and uh, Garth, the guy who processed it, was able to tell me kind of what estate it came from and a little bit of quirky knowledge about it which is always quite nice if you're going to the effort of making some bespoke furniture. So I'm just going to give you an overview really. You can see there's a load of ash. Um, the ash actually, if you look at the size of this board, um, if you're looking for a, a hardwood to make some furniture, it's a great option. That whole board I think was £32, I think it is. Um, plus fat, so decent timber, nice and dry, nice and straight, easy to work and uh, a good way to go. So not all of these big slabs mean big money. Some of the Douglas fir, like you see there, great for shelving, something unique. That oak was really cool, some sort of insect damage. And then if you're looking at more big slabs for like our desk build, this option is a good way to go. This is cedar of Lebanon, and it's pretty much the same size as our desk. And that was, so they range between kind of 100 and 200 pounds, uh, some smaller ones as well. And then of course, the normal sort of standard dry oak boards and things like that, that you might need for joinery and door linings and anything like that. I really like the look of these. These were kiln dried, I think they're big slabs of oak, really thick as well. Also you tend to get these sort of more unique beams and posts which are make a more of a feature mantle than something that's just straight grained and straight off the sawmill. So the nice thing is you're finding timbers that the people who've cut them, they kind of know that they're unique and what the, the perks are about them. So they've kind of done the first bit of sorting for you, leaving you to pick through the best bits. So whilst I was there, I managed to pick up some oak cladding and this I'll talk about a little bit later, but this is to finish off the porch build.
Before I left, I had a quick look around the side of the yard and there was some freshly cut Douglas fir. So this is basically the same sort of look we're gonna be getting on our nice big beams and posts in a couple of weeks time. Well, we're back home now and I figured I'd just do a bit of a roundup and answer some questions before I head inside and end up getting distracted and forgetting what I was gonna say and changing nappies. Hopefully you can hear me over the rain. In the last few posts on Instagram over the past few months, I guess, I've put up little photos of when I've been buying timber. I think it's probably going to be too loud with this rain. Let's head inside. Right, let's try again. Hopefully you can hear me a bit clearer in here. Um, sawmills, timber merchants, where are you buying this timber, Tim? Where are you? I keep on getting these messages when I post a photo buying, you know, timber or a slab or something like that. What I would say is, if you're looking for a, a, saw, a local sawmill or a timber merchants, they might not be the sort of business that's going to jump out at you, tracking you and using cookies and all that sort of stuff on your Facebook feed or your Instagram uh, feed. You're going to have to do a bit of the groundwork yourself. You might have to do a Google search or talk to someone locally, or check your yellow pages. And you'll be surprised because unless you're right slap bang in the middle of a city centre, you're bound to have a sawmill near you. But that said, sawmill or timber merchants aren't all the same. So I was thinking on the way back, you could probably break them down into three or four categories. Now, first up, of course, you've got your, your DIY store, your, your builder's merchant or your DIY store, where you need standardized timber for construction, stud work, joists, go there because it's gonna be standard. It's gonna be C24 or above or whatever you need for your building regulations and you can't really go wrong. Well, you can because you could find banana shaped stud work, but you know, dig through the pile and you're gonna find what you need. If you wanna build a live edge slab desk or um, some bespoke shelving or something like that, you're gonna need the right timber for the job. But if you're looking for someone local, a sawmill, and you find one, don't necessarily think they're gonna stock everything you want. You can't just go in there and say, right, I need a load of purple heart and uh, some paduk and some mahogany and not ever you might get laughed out of the shop there's production type sawmills near here where i know if i need fence panels fence posts that's the place to go and they might not even have the sawmill on site it might be down the road somewhere and you might just be going into a warehousey type shop front and that's fine they're gonna deal with your four by four fence posts Sorry, not the most constant lighting in here. Um, shouldn't complain about sun being out there. So they might, if you want your fence posts, your four by fours and your fence panels, go there because they'll deal with that standardized, quality will be the same. And you just, you know, if that's the place to go. If you need 40 fence posts and your 20 fence panels, happy days. If you went in there and said, I, will, I need timber beams cut certain size, certain shape, certain length, they may not be able to do that. They might be able to, but a lot of those places are geared up for volume. They're not necessarily gonna accommodate small bespoke orders anymore. They might have a few decades ago, but now they've, for, for profit and financial reasons, they've kind of moved away from that and they're just full on, full production standard products and standard cut sizes. On the other end of the scale is your guy um, or, or a couple of guys who've got a mobile sawmill or a small sawmill set up in a barn, set up in on some land or in a forestry or there might even be a mobile sawmill and they'll cut what you want when you want it, where you want it. That might come at a bit of an extra cost. They might only be limited to certain species of timber or certain, they might have less choice there's maybe a little bit of a limitation there. Of course, you could set your own mill up if you were cutting enough and you had your own trees. But there's a sweet spot. In the middle between those two, I would say there's a sweet spot, which is your smaller, independent, local sawmill. And if you can find one or two of those near you, then, you know, always use them if you can, because yes, they might still stock the, the fence panels, the, the CLS or, or cladding or whatever you need, but it, they might still be running a sawmill, a small saw, for those bespoke orders. And that's exactly what I found with Valley Sawmills last month when I went there for the first time. They said, yeah, we're production, we've got this production sawmill, we could do all this treated stuff for your normal landscaping stuff, but we've, we've still got this small 
smaller, we saw big, saw running for bespoke orders and for like wainy edge cladding or cutting beams to size. The happy days went over there and sure enough inside they also do air dry boards and that's those photos you saw and that's where I've been today in, in the footage there. So I would say look look around, you know, I will leave the details to, to Valley Sawmills below but I use other places as you might know. Um, so j just hunt around, support your local sawmill and don't imagine for one minute that the only place to get it is on a online woods type website or or you know an ebay place or that it's some you know mysterious um secret of the, of the trade i also picked up that oak cladding today that's for the other side of this this green panel here uh it's going to be like an infill it's nice it's going to be a little bit more expensive than going for larch or cedar or a softwood um cladding but i really wanted it to to colour and stain and age the same as everything else. But more importantly, I've got that quote now for all the timbers for the workshop. Um, I've added on to that quote enough timber to build a gazebo for the patio, the other side of the garden. Um, but all in all, it was it's over a thousand pounds for the workshop timbers, but I'm gonna cover that in a future video. But this video was more about breaking the mystery, which is local sawmills and don't be put off. It's not for trade only. The, you know, the guy in front of me was an old guy went in and he just wanted a handful of nails and, and they sorted him out with that. The guy before him that pulled in was buying an um, absolute huge load of um, timber on a flatbed. So they're happy, you know, they're not gonna chase you out if you go in just looking for, uh, you know, a bit of ash to make some shelves above your fireplace. I'll put the link down to uh, Valley Sawmills below and hopefully we're going to get back there when we come to have all the beams cut. Um, I've checked in with them, they're happy for me to go across and film some of that because I like to tell the story, you know, and if we can see it from from log through to frame it's quite nice to, to kind of show you the whole process. That is my little amateur DIY sharing of timber purchasing knowledge. It's only what I know. If you want more information then go to the pros but hopefully that just encourages you to find you know to, to to realize that you might have to just get out there and and have a look around ask local forums or whatever to find places near you it's not a mystery mystery solved anyway that's enough timber talk if you've got any questions stick them down below thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time right too much talking try for it